and hello everyone welcome back to another NIM tutorial in a previous tutorial we talked about procedures and this tutorial will be building off of that topic so if you have not seen the previous tutorial I highly recommend you do because procedures is a pretty big part in NIM all right so we have talked about results and let's just recap result is when you don't want to use return it will automatically return the last value that is stored inside of result most return will return whenever you tell it to and it return the value you give it so if i say free here it will return free instead of the value stored in result cool that was all in a previous tutorial let's continue to the next one so let's create a function called count and let's put a number in here which is of type int and here we can just say num plus equal one let's go here and say var number is equal to zero and then let's say count number let's do that a couple of times what do you think would happen if you just ignore this type mismatch here nothing if we were to pass in this number zero in here we will still get zero in return even if i say return num plus equal one or num plus one in this case, we will still get nothing. So we can echo this out, echo. And if we were to run this, we'll just get one. But what if we wanted to level up this number? What if we wanted to increment this number? In that case, we will need to pass in this number value by reference. So it can be mutated in a function. By default, when we pass in a variable inside of a function or a procedure here, then it will pass in a copy of that value. It will copy it to create a basically a new variable. But sometimes you want to pass in by reference. If you're coming from C++, you might be getting very excited right now because this can be very, very useful because the only way we can actually change this without needing to do that is by going number is equal to count number. And then right here at the end, say echo number. Now we were to run this. We'll get five as it, what that is what we want but you don't always want to do this sometimes you want to mutate a variable on the spot without having to reassign it to do that to pass in by reference we can use var int here this means pass this number value in by reference then we don't need to return an integer we just say num plus equals one and we're good to go now we can just go here and do this because we're passing in by reference, it, if we run it, will still return us the value we want. Now let's explain the difference between passing in by reference and passing in by copy. So usually when you create a procedure, and let's say this is our RAM. Do, 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 do. Okay, this is our RAM. These are all the things on the RAM where the variables and stuff is stored. So you create a variable here called x, right? So x. Now x here is 10. Now let's say you create a function that increments the value inside of it and then re and it takes in x. Well then it basically creates a copy. So this is the original. I'll put a dot here so we know that's the original. It creates a copy. Store that copy's value here. Let's call this y. Just because we call it the same name or something like that doesn't mean it will be stored the same way or it has the same value. So at this case, we just say y because it copies a new value and then y has the value of 10. When we increase this by the function, y becomes 11, but x still stays 10. So we need to make x equal to the value that is returned by y. And then we'll have to set this here to 11. Now, this is a pretty okay way. That's how most things work by default. Like in Python, when you do this, this is what you'll get. You'll get a, basically a copy and then you have to save that new value in the variable. But there's another way. If you pass in by reference, then let's say here's our function. So this is our function and we pass in X here. Now, when you didn't pass in by reference, what happened is you created a copy, you made it Y and you passed in Y. That is what happened before. But when you pass in by reference, you directly pass in x here meaning that when we modify this x value here it actually modifies the original value to the value we put it as 
That is just how memory works. If you pass in by reference, which usually includes things like pointers or whatnot if you're in C++, but if you pass in by reference, you pass in the location of this value into the function. So where this value is in the RAM and it modifies this location in the RAM. It's a pretty complex topic. I'm not going to cover it in depth because this is a function tutorial and not a pointers tutorial. But you get the gist of it. We'll later on jump into pointers and how they work and what you can do with them and how this actually works. But just know that when you pass in by reference, you can modify the original variable outside of this function. But when you don't pass in by reference, you cannot do that. You need to go here and you'll need to reset it each time. So number is equal to count. And then here we say num plus one and we need to return it. And here you also need to specify it returns an integer. So that is the different ways you can pass a value in here. As I said, I'm not going to spend too much time on it because this is not a function or, or this is not a pointer and a reference tutorial. It's more a procedure tutorial. The gist of it is if you pass in via reference, you can modify this original variable. If you pass in without reference, you're copying the original variable and creating a new variable. So when you have like a table as an example, so X is then a table with whatever in it, and you say X dot clear, like we learned in a previous tutorial, this clear passes in by reference because that is the same as saying number dot count. You can do that. This is perfectly fine. You can, of course, make this even more powerful by going, let's make this num turn to X and you can go here and say Y, which is this normal integer. Now, when you do this, you can say X plus equals Y. So here we have number. And let's say we can remove most of these number and eight or even number dot count two. So it will first become eight because zero plus eight, that is eight and it will become 10. So we'll have 10 at the end. If we run this, we'll have 10. So you can still pass in a normal variable and still use a variable by reference. But if we were to swap these two, the outcome would not be the same. Y would not change because it is just a copy. So once you get out of this function, Y will become zero or whatever the original value was. Next up, let's take a look at declaring a function before you actually create it. So we can go here and say procedure sub for subtract X, Y, which is just normal integers, not fair, not references and returns an integer. Here we are declaring this procedure. We're not actually defining it yet, we're just declaring it. Then we can actually use it here, echo sub 10 by five, and then we'll get five. And then if we want to, we can later on define it. So let's just copy this, paste it, and then we can say that is equal to x minus y, and we just return there we go. This is completely valid. We define it first and then at the end you add it. If we run this, we'll get five. If we were to remove this definition here, then first it would not know what sub is because nim goes from top to bottom. It first needs to have the definition before it can call it. So if you prefer having your functions below everything else, so let's say you have a main function and the main function should be at the top of the page and all the other functions should be underneath it. If you like having that, then this is the way to go where you can just define or create references to these functions, but then define them or then actually implement them later on below that, let's say, main function you have. Now, let's say you want to get the array length procedure, get r len. And here we can pass in an array, which is of type open array that holds integers. Open array is a special parameter. So it's just a parameter. It's a special parameter that allows you to take in an array as a parameter. And then you don't have to indicate the array size. When you usually define an array, you need to indicate its size as well. So if you want to say this is an array, you will need to define its size here. So I think it's like int three. And we can say int like that is equal to return len r. There we go. Like if you want to specify normal array, 
it might be free ant actually, then you will need to do this. But sometimes you don't know what this size of this array is going to be. Now you have two choices. You can either ask them to then pass in a sequence, which remember a sequence has worse performance than an array. So sometimes you do want an array. Plus if they are using an array, they will need to convert it from an array to a sequence and then pass it in. So sometimes you just want to let the person using the code or typing the code just pass in an array, but you cannot confirm what the size can be. In that case, you can do open array. Then you don't need to specify the size, in which case this is perfectly fine and you can just pass in any size array in there that you want. So get array length, one, two, three, and we can add one here with more than the original. And here we can, of course, just echo out. There we go. Now, if we were to run this, we get three and four, even though these arrays are of different sizes. That's the power of open array. It basically allows you to not have to specify how big the array needs to be. And other times, you might not want to necessarily take in an array, but you want to take in multiple values of the same type, of course. Then we could have something such as procedure print, which takes in the data, which is var args, and we specify it of type of string. And then this will echo something out for us. So it doesn't return anything. It's a void. And we can just echo out output. And then variable output is equal to nothing. Now what's going to happen here is this data that is going to be passed in can be multiple parameters stored inside of one. We're going to get something similar to an array. So here we can go and say for value in data output becomes output plus the value and let's also add a space. This is similar to how echo works, where we can say echo output nine and lol. It's similar to that, where echo can do this. This, in this case, is just going to allow strings. But then here, we can just say print hello, I am cool. So it will work exactly the same as if I were to say echo. But now we have our own custom version of echo called print, which also adds spaces whenever you give a comma. You can of course remove that and then it will be basically the same as per echo. And now it's like that. So that is how echo does it. They use var args, which allows them to take in multiple value. And here we say var args typed. And then no matter what type you pass in here, you can add a value in here. Now, if you want to create something that is exactly the same as echo, where you can say, hello, one false, and let's say there's an exclamation mark. If you want to do something like this, and we were to run this, we'll of course get hello, one false, and you want to be exactly the same as echo, we can do var args string colon dollar symbol. This means take any value and convert it into a string. Then if we were to go here, run it, it will still work. But now we can also copy the same value here and apply it to print. As you can see now all of them work. If you weren't going to include that, here we'll get an error saying string, bool, int, and string. So it can't allow that, so in which case we'll get an error. So this is how echo is made. And that is that for this part of the procedures tutorial. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And I will see you all again in the next MIM tutorial.